Shalom, shalom lelikulam. Today we are back to continue our exploration of the usages of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet as prefixes and suffixes. And we have covered almost all the letters. We just have a few more left to go. As we have said in the past, out of the 22 letters that are in the Hebrew alphabet, 11 of them are used for specific meanings as prefixes and suffixes. So today we're going to cover the letter Kaf, and before we begin, we're going to show the handwriting for the two forms of this letter. The Kaf is one of the five letters that also has a final form. We're going to start with the form that appears in the beginning or the middle of the word, and it looks very similar to the block form. The handwriting Kaf just starts at the top, and it comes around and it sits on the line. Cuff. And so we know with, uh, with the dogish, it says k, k, cuff. And without the dogish, it says ch, chuff. The final form uh, sits, uh, starts in a similar way. And it sits on the line, but then it goes down below the line. So this is the final form for the handwriting, kaf. It looks a little bit different than the block form. It sits on the line. I'm going to draw a dollet here. So you can see that where it sits according to the shape of the line. Um, the kaf, so feet, will sometimes have a dogish, and it will always have a vowel. Uh, usually maybe a schwa. It might have a kamatz. So that is a handwriting for the letter kaf. The kaf is used as a prefix uh, to mean either like or as or something that is similar to something else. So let's go and see what we find in the scriptures. Breshit Gimel Pasuk Chamesh Genesis 3.5 Ki yodea Elohim ki biyom achalchem mimenu v'nifkachu enechem v'hayitem ke Elohim yodea tov vara. Breshit yod gimel pasuk eser Genesis 13.10 V'yiso lot et enav v'yar et kol kikar hayarden Ki kula mishke lefne shachet Yehova et stom ve et amora, kagan Yehova, ka eretz mitzrayim, boacha tsoar. In this first example in Genesis 3, in the fateful moment, um, Hasatan is talking to Eve and he says, uh, Elohim knows that in the day that you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be open and you will be ke Elohim, like God, similar to or as God. In the second example, we see that uh, Lot is trying to decide where he's going to go. They're going to split, he's going to split up from Abraham. And he lifts up his eyes and he sees that the uh, area of the Jordan is uh, watered and um, it is... Uh, K Gan Yehova, K Eretz Mitzrayim. So he says it is like the Garden of Eden. It's just uh, it looks so pleasant to him, and in the end, that's where he decides to go. It looks like the land of Egypt, but not just the land of Egypt altogether, but um, the land of Egypt as you come by Tsoar. So these are two examples of how K just the Kaf means like or as. Remember that there are no one-letter words in Hebrew, and so when we use k, the kaf, to mean like or as, it's attached to the following word. There is a whole word that has the same meaning, and we're just going to look at that for a moment so we don't get confused. That word is kamo. Breshit yud tet pasuk Cha Esrei, Genesis 19:19. Uchmo hashachar Allah, v'yaitzu hamalachim b'lot lemor, kum 
קח את אשתך ואת שתי בנותיך הנמצאות, פן תספה בעוון העיר. שמות ט"ו פסוק חמש, אקסטרס 15.5 תהמות יחסימו ירדו במצולות כמו אבן. In the first example, uh, we're going to go back to the story of Lot. And uh, even though the word here is kamo, it's not exactly like or similar to, it's translated as when, and when the sun came up, when the dawn rose. Um, so maybe the idea of being the same time uh, as, as something else happened, then the angels are in a hurry to grab Lot and take him out of the house. In the second example, uh, it is literally like or as in the uh, Song of Moses on the other side of the sea. As they are uh, rejoicing, they say that the, the depths have covered them. In other words, the Egyptians that were following them, and they are sunk like a stone. Kamo aven. There's one other small word that we want to cover today uh, to prevent confusion for uh, comparisons, and that is the word ki. So ki is its own word, it is a kaf, and it has a yud with it, and it's translated in many different ways. Uh, we're going to look at a few. Breshit Aleph, Pasuk Arba, Genesis 1-4. Biyar Elohim et ha'or kitov, biyavdel Elohim ben ha'or uven ha'choshech. Breshit Bet, Pasuk Shalosh. Genesis 2, 3. Viavarech Elohim et Yom Hashvi'i, Vikadesh Oto, Kivo Shavat, Mikol Melachto, Asher Bara Elohim Laasot. In Genesis 1, 4, uh, and Elohim saw that the uh, light, that it was good. So here it's translated as that, Kitov. In the second example, uh, after the uh, seventh day, the creation of the seventh day, on which uh, Yahweh yeah, rested on that day, and it says, and uh, he sanctified it, ki vo Shabbat, because in it, in the seventh day, he rested. So here we see it translated as because. Breshi Dalit Pasuk Shtemesre, Genesis 4.12 כי תעבוד את הדמה לא תוסף תת כוחה לך, נח ונד תהיה בארץ. בראשית ד' פסוק עשרים וארבע. ג'נסיס 4.24 כי שבעתיים יוקם קיים, ולמך שבעים ושבעה. בראשית כ"ט פסוק שלושים ושתיים. Genesis 29:32. V'tahar leya v'teled ben v'tikra shemo reuven ki amra ki ra'a Yehova ba'ani ki ata Yehavani ishi. In the next example, uh, from the story of um, Cain, uh, uh, God punishes him, and He says, uh, even even when you work the earth. It will not give up its strength to you. So this key is more like translated when. Following that, in the story of Lamech, uh, after he slays a young man, he says, even if uh, Cain is punished seven times, then I will be punished 70 times. So that key there is uh, translated more like our idea of if. If this happens, certainly the other thing will happen to me. In a final example from the uh, story of Leah and the birth of her firstborn, Reuven, um, we see three different keys, and they're, they're really sort of translated three different ways. So she became pregnant, and she gave birth, and she called his name Reuven, Ki Amra, not because she said, but in that time or at that moment, or that's how she said, Kira Ayehava, because Yahweh has seen my affliction, Ki, therefore now, then uh, my husband will love me. 
So it's a very flexible conjunction, not like anything we have in English. Uh, so we don't want to get all these things confused. The kaf by itself to mean like or as will be attached to the noun that follows it or, or the verb that follows it. Um, kamo is a word that can mean like or as or at the same time. It's its own word, but it has the same meaning as the kaf which will be attached to the word. And finally, we have a word ki, which is a two-letter word, which is a very flexible conjunction that can mean that, or because, or if, or when. Here's a great word that has uh, two cuffs in it. It's kaha, and it just means, that's just the way it is. So today, kaha, that's just the way it is for kaf. Uh, in the meantime, tosim etainayim, al hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.